Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and this is version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode, we're going to be talking about the first program that many people write, which is the Hello World program, but we're going to explain it, be explaining it line by line, that way we know exactly what's going on, and we've got a good foundation for later uh, examples. So let's go ahead and open this up. So we'll open up hello world.cpp, and the first thing we notice is the first couple lines have these slash slash before them. So this is what's known as a comment. Comments are things that just get completely ignored by the compiler. What they're there for is documentation and maybe explaining what the code is doing. So when we go back into the code, you know, it may have been weeks, months, maybe even years in some cases, and we want to, you know, not have to read the entire thing and spend a whole lot of time on that. So comments are a good way of just explaining what's going on here, why was this implemented that way, and it's also good for documentation, so saying what the program does and maybe who wrote it. Right. Okay, uh, but we don't necessarily have to use uh, slash slash. So what if we have a whole bunch of uh, lines of comments we want? Do we have to write slash slash before all of them? Well, the answer to that is no. We can just have a slash star and then uh, later on star slash, right? So this makes a block comment. So everything between the slash star and star slash will be commented. Now I have my editor set up to automatically generate these other stars to make it look pretty but I can get rid of all of them and you can see they're all still comments, right? So I can have a big block comment with only, uh, without having to put slash slash before every line. Okay, so that's gonna be comments. So the next thing we have is this include statement. Now this include statement relates to the compiler. It basically says, I want you to find the files associated with IOStream and paste them right here. So we don't wanna reinvent the wheel every single time we do something in C++. And a lot of times, uh, there's a lot of features that are in already you know, pre-made inside of the C++ standard library. So to use them, we'll use this include, these angle brackets, and then IO stream. Now, um, in this case, right, or in other cases, we may write our own uh, implementations of things. So we'll need to include other uh, files that we've written that aren't uh, inside of the standard library. So in those cases, uh, cases, you may see this include and then parentheses, you know, maybe hello.h. Now, if I have the file hello.h in this directory, it will just paste the contents of that file right here. And we'll go more into compilation and how this works in the preprocessor uh, in the next video. Okay, so the next thing we have uh, has to do with namespaces. Now, there's this uh, namespace standard, right, this namespace std. And you may see code that has this um, using namespace std. So this is typically bad practice, um, and we'll explain why. So everything from the standard library is in this same namespace, this namespace standard. And a namespace just says, you know, uh, what does a particular you know identifier like uh, C out or inline this end l, uh, what does it mean inside of this namespace? So we can basically scope. Uh, the meaning of certain names to certain namespaces. So if I want to use something from the standard namespace, I have to put this std colon colon, which is a scope resolution uh, operator. So it says I want to use C out from the standard namespace. And so when we uh, do this using std colon colon C out, it basically says, okay, every time I use C out in this code, I'm going to assume it's from this standard namespace. So down here, we don't have to prepend the C out with uh, you know, std colon colon C out, right? It's automatically done for us or it's assumed, right? So when we do this uh, using namespace standard, we say just include everything from the standard namespace. So that's why it's typically bad practice. We don't want to include things that we're not using, right? So we typically shy away from that. In code as simple as this, we don't even need to necessarily put uh, have either of these using statements, we could simply get rid of them. And then down here in the two times we use this, uh, one's for C out and the other one for inline, we could just replace both of these with std colon colon inline, and we'd have the same functionality. So there may be cases where we want to uh, use our own namespaces or create our own namespaces. So, you know, maybe we have a fancy implementation for C out, so we make our own namespace for that. So we could have, say, you know, uh, namespace, we can name this whatever we want. So we can say namespace foo. And inside of namespace foo, we could have something like int c out is equal to five, right? And then we could have another namespace, so namespace bar 
and then we could have int c out is equal to 10. Now in both these cases, right, it's okay to have multiple uh, multiple of the same name, and the reason why is because they're in separate namespaces. So uh, down here, if I want to use either of these, I would have to say something like, you know, if I want to print out uh, c out from uh, the foo namespace, I could use uh, foo colon colon c out, right? And this says I want to get uh, from the foo namespace what c out means. And c out in the context of this namespace, it's not a stream object, it's just going to be an integer, right? So just kind of a, uh, an integer number. So that's a little bit about namespaces and how we can define our own. So the next thing we have to talk about is uh, main functions. So every C++ program will have a main function. And the reason why is because that's where the program is going to begin. So here we've got this int main. And inside of these uh, parentheses are just going to be any arguments that we have to our main function. Now, the main function is special right? because that's where all C++ programs start. And so it has two signatures, right? And these are just ways that we can define a main function. The first is int main without any arguments. The other one is int argc and then this character pointer argv array. So we won't go into this one too much right now, but you can just know that uh, this signature of the main function or this style of main function is when we want to pass in, say, command line arguments. So if we want to call an executable, right, in this case, if we want to run an executable like hello, and we want to pass in maybe a uh, test or, you know, 10 or maybe a number, right, that's how we have to use that signature of the main function, right, in order to pass those things into our executable. Okay, so and that's a little bit on main function, so that's just where our program begins. And this int outside of it just says, what does this function return? It returns an integer. And that's usually, you know, whether or not a main function completed successfully or not. So zero generally means success. And we use something like negative one if we want to identify maybe some kind of error. Okay. So the next line, right, is where we actually print something out to the stream. So in this case, we print hello world out to the screen. So we use C out this less than less than and this just says I want you to pass to C out whatever is after this spot right so in this case we want to pass a string that says hello world and we denote a string with these quotation marks and then we do this uh, less than less than so if we want to print anything else out we just have to stack these less than less than so we want to print out hello world and then we want to print out inline and inline is just defined as a new line character so it, exactly what you'd expect so if I if I say press enter Right? It takes me to a new line. So in this end line or end L uh, does the same thing. Alternatively, we could get rid of that and we could just put slash in. So that means the same thing. Okay. So the last thing we have is a return, right? So the return just says um, what we're going to return from this function. So we already said we're returning an integer. That's what this means. In this case, we'll just return zero, which is typical for a main function that gets all the way to the end. We'll generally have something, we'll catch some kind of error up above in some circumstances, and maybe we'll, we'll return negative one, right, if we want to signify that something bad happened. But in this case, we'll just have return zero. And the only other thing is that we use these curly brackets to denote, you know, basically the bounds of our main function. So what gets executed when main gets called, right? So everything between these two uh, uh, curly brackets. And then at the end of all of our C++ lines, we'll have this semicolon. And that just basically, you can think of it as a period. It ends the sentence. So that's going to do it as far as explaining the program. Let's go ahead and, uh, and run the program. So the first thing we have to do is compile it, right? And we'll talk more about compilation next video. But in this case, it just means turning my C++ code into something that can run on the hardware, right? Uh, so to do this, we'll be using the G++ compiler. Alternatively, you might be using something like Clang++ um, or maybe a Microsoft compiler. The process will be very similar. So uh, in this case, I'll use G++. I'll pass in my input file, hello world.cpp. I'll say dash O to say what is my output name. And then I will, you know, I can call this whatever I want. Maybe I'll just call it hello, right? And so you'll see now I have an executable here, right? So this is what I can actually run. And to run it, I can use dot slash hello. And you see, we'll go ahead and print out hello world to the screen uh, uh, screen, because you know inside of my code here, 
we see that I passed to the C out stream object hello world followed by a new line character, right? This end line. All right, so that's going to do it for the basics of a hello world program and explaining exactly what's going on there. All right, uh, so for you know, all the code from these videos and from the previous uh, version of this series, you can find all of that at github.com slash coffee before arch. So here we've got the entire C++ Crash Course, the original series, with all the code being updated for version two of the series. So you can find a link to the original video, right? And uh, I'll have a link to the new video on here as well, and a link to the code used. Uh, so feel free to download any of this, check it out, and of course, let me know if you have any questions or things you'd like me to explain, and I'd be happy to help you. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.